Good morning, everyone. So happy everyone can make it this morning. And I welcome you into a new year. 2023, we made it to a new year. Well, will everyone stand and sing with me this morning? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. And for he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever for the life that's been reborn. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise forever. Forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever, forever. From the, from the rising to the setting sun, His love endures forever. And by the ground he will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever, forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever. It is a good morning to remember that we are imperfect. <laughs> um, a lot of things come with a new year. New beginnings, time for improvement, and time to reflect. Every year we learn to look back at what happened last year and try to look how we can grow on to the next year and become better and become who God wants us to be. Whether we stray away from the path a little bit, go towards that wide and narrow, or we come back to the hard and narrow. 
So let the next song just kind of remind you that God can do wondrous things and he can carry you through the hard times. Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, the heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven. I will celebrate the light And when I stumble in the darkness I will call your name by night God of wonders beyond our galaxy you are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven. beyond our galaxy you are holy holy the universe declares your majesty you are holy holy Lord of heaven and earth Lord of heaven and earth. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. Pardon for sin, 
and of peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand beside great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all i have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness lord unto When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth, that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song Through a song in itself It's not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made when it's all about you it's all about you jesus King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself, it's not what you have required. You'll search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for this time to come together as a family. New faces, old faces, all are welcome. Your family is an abundance of all of us. And I thank you for each and every one sitting here, standing here, whatever they can do. Either way, being here is praise to you. 
worshiping, worshiping together is praise to you. Let us continue to praise with our bodies and our minds and our souls throughout every day, every hour, every second of the year. And let this day be a reminder for that. In your name, amen. You can be seated. I am on. Good. Good morning. My name is Scott Prisky. I'm one of the elders here at the church. And this is the time of our service where we take just a few minutes to specifically remember and give thanks for what Jesus did for us on the cross. If you want to take communion with us this morning and you did not pick one of these little communion kits up as you walked in this morning, they're on the table as you came in, just raise your hand. We'll make sure somebody gets one of those to you. Um, as I was preparing for what I want to talk about this morning, earlier in the week, um, a video popped up on my social media feed that I thought was so good that I thought I would, I'd play this short two-minute video for you this morning. Um, it's so rich with information and the way it's presented. I thought it was so good um, that I just felt like we'd go that direction. Looks like he's got it going, ready to go. Worked better than I thought, actually. Good. Um, will you pray with me this morning, and we'll take communion together. Dearly Father, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for who you are and all that you've done. Thank you for being sin for us, paying the price for our sin, adopting us into your family, and then sanctifying us, growing us, maturing us throughout our lives to be more and more like you. So someday that we can spend eternity with you in your presence, free from sin, free from the desire of sin, free from the pain and suffering that sin brought. God, thank you again for loving us so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
something that we do every year in our church. We uh, select leaders for elders and deacons to serve. And then usually some Sunday after that, a couple weeks after we do an ordination service, and that is what we're going to do today. And so I'm gonna have um, uh, Dale and Scott come up here. Dale and Scott are continuing on as elders. Um, Scott was reselected or uh, affirmed again for another three-year term, and Dale's currently serving his three-year term. And so, thank you, Dale. And we're going to do a ordination service and so we're going to start that service with a prayer uh, by Dale. Uh, before we do that, I'd just like to thank those that are, have served over the past three years, if you went off this past year, and um, uh, look forward to those that are coming on. So let us uh, bless the service this morning. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to um, set aside these people that have been chosen to help serve uh, in your work uh, within this community and within this church and help us to help us all as we uh, serve and lead side by side that uh, we will do your will, that uh, we will look to you for guidance. We will um, seek you daily to help us to, be, to become and uh, be the type of people that represent you well pray these things now in your name. Amen. Uh, Tom Giles and Kevin Williams, will you please come forward and will the congregation stand please? <clears throat> Have you members of this community of Christian believers seeking God's guidance and wisdom chosen Tom Giles and Kevin Williams who now stand before you to be an elder in our congregation to care for the spiritual wel welfare of this congregation? <clears throat> if so, please answer, we have. And do you wish them to be set apart to shepherd this flock as, elder ten as the elders tended the flock of God in the early church? If so, please answer, we do. You may be seated. You're being set apart today as elder the title of your ministry means pastor and shepherd. You've been selected by the members of this congregation to care for their spiritual growth and to lead them toward maturity as Christians. Have you prayerfully considered the privileges and responsibilities that, have been, that will be yours through your service as elder? If so, please say, I have. Are you willing to accept this task and commit yourself to be a shepherd, a guardian, and a leader? And an, and, a, and an example for this family of Christian believers? If so, please say, I am. Amen. Will you seek the help of God through prayer and the study of his word so that your service will bring honor to him and to his son, Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I will. Amen. Will you guys please kneel? Upon you is now confirmed the office of elder of this congregation, as you have been chosen by your peers and have declared your willingness to accept this office. We ask that God give you the wisdom to lead by example as you faithfully perform the duties of elder. We hereby formally ordain you to this office. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you so much again for loving us. Thank you for these two men that you brought forward, I pray that you will strengthen them, encourage them. I pray, Lord, as a congregation, too, that we will support them, uh, give them the, the help that they need as they go about the, the office of elder and try to do their very best to lead in a way that's glorified and pleasing to you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Would the congregation please stand again, and would John Franklin and Bill Nyman please come forward. <clears throat> there's several other deacons that serve with them. Uh, I think there's five others, and so these are two of the seven men who serve in that capacity. Congregation, do you, the members of the church, 
at Footville acknowledge and receive John and Bill as deacon and do you promise to honor, encourage, and cooperate with them as they seek to fulfill the biblical function of deacon and office of service? If so, please answer, we do. Please be seated. You're being set apart today as deacon. The title of your ministry means servant or helper or one who ministers to needs. You've been selected by the members of this congregation to serve them and to lead them in service. Have you prayerfully considered the privileges and responsibilities that will be yours through your service as deacon? If so, please say, I have. Are you willing to accept this task and commit yourself to be a servant of this congregation to help those in need and to teach others to serve well by your example as deacon? If so, please say, I am. And will you seek the help of God through prayer and the study of his word so that your service will bring honor to him and to his son, Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I will. I will. Okay. You guys kneel. As you've been chosen <clears throat> by the members of this congregation to serve as deacons, we confirm the choice and ordain you to the office of deacon in the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he purchased by his own blood. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for these two men that have come forward and chose to help lead this church uh, in a way that would be pleasing to you. Thank you so much for loving us. In your heavenly name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Um, as we go to our prayer time, I don't have anything, um, any new additions, yes? Okay, um, so I knew this, but I didn't know if I could say this, and Jill just said I, I probably could. Um, Dawn Manley, some of you know her that come here. Um, she helps out in the nursery. She's here on Wednesday night. Um, her daughter Haley was out last night, and they don't know where she is this morning. And the police are now involved, and so if you would please pray for Haley Manley, that they would find her, pray for her parents, Dawn and Jeremy, because Jill and I have been there before when... We couldn't find Megan one time, and that's a long, funny story, but it uh, turned out well. But at this point, I know exactly how they feel because you have no idea where your daughter is. And so if you'd just be praying for them, they would appreciate that very much. Um, on our prayer list, uh, Chris McCarthy will, um, has not come home yet. She won't be coming home uh, anytime soon. They're going to reevaluate her January 20th. That's the next time she sees a doctor. So she's currently in a rehab facility until at least then. And then Tuesday, I get to have uh, my shoulder all yanked back together. So I'd appreciate prayers for that. Um, I've got a good two weeks that I'll be off in recovery. Um, and so uh, just pray for healing there. Uh, the next two Sundays, we're going to have a guest speaker, Justin Burge. Some of you know him. He's uh, one of the missions that we support, uh, His House Christian Fellowship has campus ministries in Oshkosh and Madison and, and a couple other colleges as well. And so Justin's a leader of that ministry. He's been here to speak before. He does an excellent job. So the next two Sundays, Justin's gonna come and preach. While I'm not here, maybe I'll show up that second week, but uh, I know that the recovery is gonna be uh, challenging, at least at the start. And so uh, I appreciate your prayers for that as well. Let's, uh, let's take a moment and pray. God, we come to you at this time, and 
we just are, are thankful that you uh, hear us and that you see everything that's going on. Um, God, we especially want to lift up um, Haley, Manley, Lord, um, Don and Jeremy don't know where she is. And uh, that's really hard as a parent. And uh, we hope that it's pretty something innocuous, that there's maybe she just is tired or fell asleep or doesn't hear, hear her phone or whatever it is. Um, Lord, we pray for a simple resolution. Uh, but Lord, until they know where she is, that's just nerve wracking. And so Lord, help us to, uh, throughout this day, to lift them up, to encourage them uh, through prayer. Uh, God, we know that you know where she is. And we ask you just to reveal that and resolve this quickly for that family. God, we also ask you continue to be with uh, Chris McCarthy, help her to get stronger through her therapy and, and, uh, and, and just help her to gain the strength that she needs to be able to, to either get back home or if she needs to stay where she is, Lord, give her the grace to accept that. And God, I thank you that you're with uh, me as this coming week I'll have surgery and recovery as well, and I appreciate that as well. And there's so many others on our prayer list, people that <clears throat> need prayer and encouragement. And we just thank you that um, we can come to you with everything and you will take the time to listen. You will hear everything we have to talk to you about. And so we are very thankful for that. God, as we look at our text today, I just pray that you would speak to us through your word. I just pray that your spirit would reveal truth. And Lord, I pray that your spirit would speak through me as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We've been going through a Christmas playlist, uh, songs of the season, things that I might have either heard on the radio or you've heard on the radio or somewhere else. And uh, today, uh, our Christmas playlist song is Mary Did You Know? And if you haven't heard that song, uh, the singer is asking Mary, Jesus' mother, hey, did you know all these things? Uh, here's the first verse. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that, our, that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? The child that you delivered will soon deliver you. And the song goes on to ask Mary all these questions. Did you know he's going to heal the lame? He's going to make the blind see that he's going to raise the dead, that he's king of all creation, that he walked where angels walked. And so it just kind of goes on and asks Mary, all these questions, did you know, did you know, did you know? And some people make fun of that song and they go, well, of course Mary knew. Mary knew. She knew all that stuff. I mean, she had the angel come and talk to her and said, hey, this is who you're going to have as a child. And, and Mary just inherently knew all that stuff. Well, I don't believe she knew it all. I don't think she had any idea what was coming. And I think the text in Luke 2 reveals that quite clearly and because there's things in it where they are just surprised, she and Joseph, when those things happen. So what I want to do is look at the story of what happened after Jesus was born, see what Mary and Joseph do know, and then at the end, I've got three application points out of our story that I think will help us as we follow Jesus. So we're going to pick up the story in the middle of Luke 2. Uh, this story would kind of fit in between Jesus' birth and the coming of the Magi, uh, you kind of have to take Luke's account and Matthew's account of Jesus' birth and all the stories around it to kind of put those two together. This is before they went to Egypt as well. So we start off in the middle of that text. We see Mary and Joseph are headed to the temple for Jesus' dedication. There are actually two reasons why they went to the temple. Um, but since Jesus is their firstborn son, something that was commanded of all Israelites, all Jewish people, was that when they had certain firstborn animals or a firstborn son, they had to come to the temple and offer a, a, a gift or an offering to God of five shekels of silver. And you can find that. It shows up right in the in the. Uh, story of the Exodus, all the way back in Exodus 13, 15, is where it shows up for the first time, where uh, God sends the angel, or God shows up, or however that worked, and there's a plague of the firstborn, 
in Egypt where all the firstborn were going to die if their houses did not have blood on the doors, uh, doorposts. And so this is also talked about in Exodus 34, Leviticus 27, Numbers 3, Numbers 8, Numbers 18. And Numbers 18, 15 through 16 is where you find out that it's five shekels of silver that you're supposed to bring this gift, this offering to God, and redeem the firstborn child. Luke 2 mentions that specifically, but they're also told, if you read in it, it says they're to offer two doves or pigeons. And that was for Mary. If you go to Leviticus 12, there's a, a command there that God gives that's for the purification of moms after they've had a baby. And so they were supposed to bring a lamb, but if the family was poor, they would bring two doves or two pigeons. So in Luke just kind of giving us that comment, that statement in there, we learn that Mary and Joseph don't have a lot. They're poor. They don't have a lamb to offer. And so my guess is they're going to Jerusalem to the temple to do these two things. Jerusalem was only about seven or eight miles from Bethlehem. And I don't think in going they expected anything unusual to happen. I thought we'd just go in, we offer our gifts, the sacrifices God requires, and we're going to come right out. And again, I believe this happens before the Magi come. Uh, the reason why is I don't think if Herod was looking for them, they would go to Jerusalem where Herod was. So that kind of gives you a time frame. So they get to the temple, and when they get there, they meet two people. And the first one we see in verse 25, it says, Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting on the, for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And so as Luke tells this story, we meet Simeon waiting for the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. We know he's old because it says he, was, he said um, he's, not, he's waiting for that. He knew he would see it before he would die, before he would pass away. That was going to be something he would experience and so maybe he knows all this through a dream. We don't know how he knows that. We don't know if an angel showed up to him. We don't know if God just spoke to him. But somehow he knows that he's going to see this because he's looking for that and God's affirmed that he will see it. And then verse 27, the story goes on. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And so I'm sure as he comes up and sees uh, the baby and comes to Mary and Joseph, Mary and Joseph probably taking a little back like, well, what's this guy going to do? What's going to happen here? And then when they hear what he has to say, could you imagine being Mary and Joseph hearing all this, listening to it? Look at verse, look on in the story, verse 33. It says, the child's father and mother marveled at what he, what he had said about him. Then Simeon blessed them. And said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This last part, Simeon directs directly at Mary. She would see the opposition Jesus faced from Jewish leaders. She would see what would happen uh, when they, they hated him, when they wanted to get rid of him, she would see the crucifixion. She stood at the foot of Jesus' cross. Joseph isn't mentioned after the next part of our story, after the next last thing that happens in this chapter. He's not mentioned. So I think somewhere between Jesus' age 12 and Jesus' start of his ministry, which is probably around age 30, Joseph dies in that span. And it's only Mary, and that's why he says that to her. Well, if Simeon, what he said wasn't enough, then someone else comes up to them. Look at verse 36. 
There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old and had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped, worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. She's 84, that's very old in that culture. It's very unusual. She was only married seven years. Maybe she was married at 14 or 15 or 16. That means she's been a widow for almost 60 years. That's a long time. She's also a prophetess. She proclaims the future. She might have dreams or vision. She's inspired by the Holy Spirit to speak. Maybe she also was spoken to through a dream or an angel appeared to her. And I'm sure when the people who knew her, she is in the temple all the time, so people must have known her or known about her at least. When they hear her talk about this child and who he is, I'm sure they're amazed. I'm sure they're wanting to know more. And I'm sure Mary and Joseph leave these two interactions and go and do what they had to do in the temple, but I'm sure they're wondering, wow, what does all this mean? Then the text in Luke, Luke's account says they went to Galilee. My guess is they ended up there via Bethlehem and then Egypt and then Galilee to kind of mesh those two stories from Matthew and Luke together. Then the other story in this chapter happens about 12 years after this where Jesus is at the Passover. <clears throat> Verse 41 tells us that every year Mary, Mary and Joseph would make that long trip to Jerusalem from Nazareth. Nazareth. It's about 70, 80, 90 miles. It would take them multiple days to get there. But the Passover feast in Luke 2 had a few extra things happening in it. The Passover finished. That entire festival lasted several days. Mary and Joseph and their family left with a group they had been traveling with, and they were one whole day into their journey back to Nazareth, and Jesus is missing. And again, for them... I understand how that feels. Could you imagine? You have your 12-year-old son, you took him to Jerusalem, and he's gone. And so Joseph and Mary go back to Jerusalem. That would have been a day's journey back. And let's pick up the story. Look at verse 46. It says, After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at, at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. I wonder what it would have been like to be one of these leaders, one of these teachers in the temple and having this conversation with Jesus, asking these questions discussing uh, who knows what. Old Testament law, things that happen in Bible history. And I wonder, too, were any of those uh, leaders who were there, any of those teachers, were they alive when Jesus starts his public ministry and they see all these things happen and go, oh, that was that boy? I don't know. They had probably been, uh, Joseph and Mary, when they see all this, they're shocked. Uh, that was not the norm for their culture for a 12-year-old boy to be in the middle of a conversation with people much older than him, much more respected than him. And they've been looking at least in, in, for a couple days in Jerusalem. And could you imagine how they felt before they found Jesus? We took the Son of God to church and we lost him. Could you imagine that? How that would feel, or the Messiah is missing, or the Savior of the world has been left behind and they were searching everywhere, and when they find Jesus, they were probably pretty upset at him because he was still their son. And I think at this point, it would have been nice to know the inflection in Mary's statement when she says this. I think Jesus is getting, if, if I can term it this way, the lecture. 
she, she's given it to him. She's like, what are you thinking? Why are you doing this to us? Could you not see how we're upset by this? We probably all gotten those lectures from our moms. Jesus responded, verses 49 through 52. Why, was, why were you searching for me? <clears throat> he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to, to them. But his measure, mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Jesus was where he thought he should be. And again, Mary and Joseph, the text says quite clearly, they didn't understand what he meant by his statement. Jesus went with them, was obedient to them. He honored his father and mother. And Mary did something here in these verses that we also see in Luke chapter 2, verse 19, when the shepherds came and found them in the stable in Bethlehem. She treasured all these things in her heart. She just kind of filed them away. Thought about what is this that happened. And Jesus grew up and prepared for what he had come to do. From the story, I'm going to draw three application points. I think there are things in this text that apply to us, that are useful to us. I think it's not just a couple of good stories that kind of go around the, the birth of Jesus that um, we can read to kids when they're little or act out in a Christmas play. We primarily see Mary and Joseph uh, being active in these stories, and we need to pay attention to several things. The first thing we need to pay attention to is their commitment to God. Joseph and Mary does everything required by the Jewish law. They did. They go to the temple to present Jesus, God's son. They didn't think they didn't need to do it because of who he is. They, didn't, they did it because they were devoted followers of God. They gave the offering for Mary's purification. And they were a poor family. They probably had to scrape some money together to be able to take in these two doves or two pigeons. They didn't have great wealth, but they offered what they could. They did everything expected, and they did it humbly, especially when they encountered Simeon and Anna. They did everything God asked either by the angel, what was said to Mary, or by the dream that Joseph had. They did it all. They were devoted to God. They had a great commitment to him. Why did they? Did you ever think about that? Why did they? I mean, why didn't they say, we're parents of Emmanuel, God with us, the Messiah. Why do we need to take him to the temple to present him to himself? Why didn't they just say that? Why do we have to take the promised one, the Savior of Israel, do we really need to redeem God's son, his firstborn? Do we really need to dedicate him? When you think about it, I guess they have a lot of valid reasons probably not to do it. But they did. And then Mary. She is the virgin who conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, working in her the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. She spoke with angels, what was in her was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Why does she need to be purified? Why does she need to go through that? They could have made excuses as to why they really didn't need to go to the temple. But I don't think that ever crossed their mind. I don't think they ever thought, we don't need to do this. We're an exception. We don't need to show up. They did everything God required. And it was because of their devotion to him they probably never thought of a reason why they shouldn't go. They were committed to following God completely. Because they did, they met Simeon. And they heard all the things that he had to say. They also met Anna. And she worshiped God through their encounter. She encouraged others who were looking forward to the redemption of Israel. Many people were blessed by their encounter there with these two people. Many people were encouraged by it, and I'm sure they were as well, as they were blessed. Our commitment to God is not just for me or for you. 
Our commitment to God is to be lived out in a community of other believers, a community that's messy, that's far from perfect, where we need others to help us, where things aren't always easy or the way that we want them. But Jesus gave us a spiritual community, an eternal family so that he could bless us through each other, so that we could worship him together, so that we can pray for and encourage each other. I can't imagine what it would feel like if I was Don and Jeremy and I didn't have anybody I could talk to or anybody I could ask to pray for me. But because we're here together and all that happened at the timing that it did, we can immediately lift up their need to God in prayer. If you make one resolution this year, make this one. To be with each other more and more as a church family. That means it will happen here and it will happen other places too. And let God work through you to accomplish his purposes for you and for others in the community that he gave you and me. Joseph and Mary also, we see in the text, they led their son. Jesus is God. Think about that. That must have been pretty unusual to be a parent and know that your child is God. I mean, do you treat him differently? Do you act differently? What do you do? But the text says they take him to Passover. They went there yearly. Jesus stays behind. They go look for him. Jesus never sinned. So I get the sense, though, in reading this story, maybe a little bit between the lines, that 12-year-old Jesus is a little bit of a challenge at times. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibilities. I'm, that's not being disrespectful to God or to him. But imagine having discussions with him, knowing that he is Messiah and God's son. That probably changed how things went. That probably changed how things worked or who people thought of Jesus and how his siblings treated him. That probably changed all those things. Jesus thought he was doing the right thing and staying there and talking to the leaders. And it feels like he is showing others who he is. But Mary wants him to know that it wasn't the best decision to stay behind. And obviously they told him it was time to come home and he was obedient to them and that was great but like I said can't re imagine having the responsibility to raise Jesus as a son but they did it they led their son they did what was right for him they would protect him by taking him to Egypt to escape Herod they taught him about what it meant to follow God they taught him the Old Testament law they would talk about all the things that God did for Israel and for them. And Jesus knew it all, but they still did that. They led him as his parents. They would take him to Passover year after year. They would celebrate what God did to lead them out of Egypt. They would choose the Passover lamb and then sacrifice it and eat it together. When God, when Jesus saved Israel, and led them out of slavery. Jesus was there with God for all of it. He saw everything that happened. They taught Jesus about what it was like to be part of a family and follow God. Keep your eyes open and look around you. Someone might need you to help lead them. Maybe it's a child you know who's young and just needs guidance, who needs someone to teach them about God. Maybe it's someone who's new to following Jesus and they haven't uh, really understood everything that they've gotten into. They don't really understand what it means to follow him. Maybe they haven't even made that decision yet and they're trying to find out more about him. And you have the opportunity. You have the opportunity to lead them. Maybe it's someone who I would term a spiritual infant or a spiritual child and they just need a spiritual parent to walk with them. Be willing to lead others and disciple them. Be willing to be led if you need that. It's one more reason why we need each other, so that we can learn about God and become more like him. Last, Joseph and Mary trusted God to lead. 
Mary didn't know all that God would do. She didn't. So when you hear that song, Mary, did you know? She didn't know. She didn't know everything that was going to happen, but she pursued God to know him more. She was humble and followed what God told her to do, and Joseph did that as well. They trusted God to lead. When Simeon said to Mary, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that is spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. I expect Mary knew at that point something was going to come that she, didn't, she wasn't going to like. I expect at that point Mary thought, I can just protect him from this. I can keep him safe from this, but she doesn't do that. She doesn't hide him away. She doesn't stop him from being the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. She doesn't do any of that. She helped Jesus, as any mom would have, to become a young man who grew in wisdom and stature <clears throat> and in favor with God and man. And she didn't know that he would raise the dead or walk on water or teach thousands. She didn't know that he would heal the lame and the blind. She didn't know any of that. But she was there with him. She stood at the foot of the cross. I'm sure she had lots of questions for God at that point, wondering why everything is happening this way. Has he really fulfilled his purpose? Was it all going to end like this? And then three days later, when he raises from the dead, she was there. And she was there when the church began, if you look in Acts chapter 1. She was present. How much trust did it take for her to help Jesus as he grew up to be his mom and watch him become Lord and Messiah? We can learn a lot from Mary and Joseph. We can let God lead. We can walk with others. We can follow him together. We can be committed to each other and to know him. And we don't know everything that's going to happen. We don't know everything that's going to take place. But we can know the one who invites us to go with him, Jesus, our salvation and our Lord who rules heaven and earth now and forever. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this story out of Luke chapter two. We thank you for um, what you reveal to us through it. We thank you for Joseph and Mary for their obedience, for their love for you, for their commitment to you. Lord, help us to become more like them. We don't have a Jesus that we get to raise, or we don't have Jesus that we have in our church or our congregation, someone that uh, we are uh, seeing as a child growing up. But Lord, we have people around us who are following you, who need to be led, who need to be encouraged, who need, to be, need us to walk with them. Lord, help us to do that well. Lord, we thank you for their story. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, if you have a public decision as you'd like to, if you'd like to make, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, or maybe you need prayer, uh, please come forward as we stand and sing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look for in his wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of his glory and grace Turn your eyes upon Jesus us. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace, in the light of his glory. good to be with you today. Let's close in prayer. God, we thank you for this time that we have together. We thank you for blessings of being with each other. We thank you for your presence in our lives. Lord, we uh, 
ask that as we go into this new year, as we walk with you, Lord, we look forward to all the good things that you're going to do. Lord, we know that you're present in this year. You've seen everything that's going to happen. Lord, as we walk faithfully with you, may we always trust what you do in our lives and trust what plans you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hope you have a great week, everyone. There are donuts down in the Fellowship Hall. We'd love to have you go down and eat one or two or five. And so please come down and enjoy the fellowship together.